Hi there YouTube and makers and welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today and I'm really glad to have you because I really enjoy these finishing episodes in which I finally get to a point in which the part that I started out making is done and finished. And every finished part contributes to a greater and larger assembly that goes towards completing the my Kozo Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track in a 040 configuration or layout. And a big part of my learning experience is that I'm advised very heavily by two machinists, a journeyman machinist, as well as a journeyman tool and die maker. While we were discussing the make and looking at the steps in the book, one of the things that came up is that to make these journal bearings, Kozo Hiroka would have me holding on a surface area of just 20 thousandths. Now keep in mind, from my understanding and my recollection, is that the average human hair, okay, average, so there's great deviance regionally and by morphology and different people, is that it is four thousandths thickness. So the book would have machining done on a bearing surface that is held to an area of only approximately the thickness of five human hairs, which isn't much. On the advice of the journeyman, it was determined that the machining I should do in the proper and the precision way to machine will be to do so on a fixture. So, so far I've made a fixture to, or rather an alignment tool to put the bearings inside of the chuck, my non-adjustable three jaw chuck. And now I'm gonna be making a fixture in order to hold the bearings and finish machining them and add their tapers. Be sure to stay to the end because I'll be covering another great journeyman tip of the day as well as discussing how to properly use this fixture I'll be making here in a moment. So come on over and join me at the bench and let's make some chips. I'm gonna go ahead and nip off the end of this axle since it's scrapped anyways and makes a good resource for making all these tools, jigs, harbors, and holding fixtures. I'm just gonna be practicing my speeds and feeds, see what this carbide and this setup likes. But also, I'm going to zero out my hand wheel so that when I go in to cut the body of the fixture, I can get the exact length needed. So my bearings are 0 0.270 each. So I cut that body to about, oh, to a length of about, I think I'm going to go with 260 on this one. Just checking the dimensions, I'm at 0.276, so I've got about 26,000 to remove off the diameter. And I go in that 0 0.260 and stop right there. So it needs to be just shorter than the length of the bearing. Otherwise, the screw won't have anything to back up against it. Lock and do so. Just kind of checking that out. Looks good so far with the bearings. I'm just gonna slow this down, take a closer look for a moment. It's just shorter and it doesn't need to be the overall length of the bearing. After all, the internal dimensions have got a chamfer cut on the inside. So there's nothing for the holding fixture to back up against. Looks like I'm at about 259 and some change. So I got about another 9 thousandths or so left to remove. That's off the diameter, so I cut that in half. It'll probably only take about four. Take my pressure cut now. Oop, hit that shoulder. So wipe that off. And a little under where I want to be by about one ten thou. But that's probably fine. Let's see how. Oop. Let's see. 
where that's going to end up with the bearing. I want to get as close as possible to that 0 0.250, but just under so there's no play for that bearing. Remove that burr. I don't want to put any steel chips on a bearing. Oh, nice fit. Like that. So let's get rid of all these chips and get set up for some center drilling and tapping. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this tool post off because I'm done with it for now. I'm getting my center drilling using that journeyman trick of glued up to act as a cutting fluid rest drawer. And now I'm going to use my number 21 drill. I'm going with a 10 NF screws and tap. Kind of a conundrum. I want to go deep enough so I have plenty of threads, but not so deep that I cause this uh, leftover metal to be using like one purpose because I want to be able to trim it up and use it for any other fixtures or material I may need in the future. Now, pay attention to the sound you're about to hear. That snap and crunch is backing off the tap, snapping the chip off. Luckily, not the tool, but breaking the chip so that it can cl clear the cutting flutes. And I'm just going to hand feed this very gently, very gingerly, a positive, solid feel. And there, as soon as I feel binding, I'm going to back it off. And I do just enough to get enough threads in it. I feel the tap is adequately lined up. And we go to this wider view and I'm going to finish tapping by hand. Now, uh, put a piece of leather down so that I don't make sure I protect the ways of my blade as much as possible. And you know, continue with just that kind of going in, feeling that binding, and backing off and listening for that snapping chip sound. And then going back in, possibly removing any kind of chips to clear the flutes, and slow and steady, just go in, bind, back it off, clean, over and over again. Last thing I want to do is snap and tap. Same thing, it's getting a little bit better, more positive, go a little further, feel a little braver, feel that bind. Sometimes I see it start to twist a little. That's where it's too much. So I think I've got enough down. And I'm just going to be using plain old electric wire strippers. And they have this feature in them where you can cut smaller screws and makes for a nice finish of this old pair I've got. It's been around my family for decades, certainly more than I am. Tested that screw, feels nice. And just kind of check that out, make sure clearances. Nice. Now, I don't want to put it all the way down and mar the bearing with the steel screws. I'm going to put my intervening copper washer in. I'm going to begin by touching off, but a little heavy handed there. So I'm going to move it over and touch off someplace else and come in. Luckily, that heavy handed touch off wasn't deeper than the amount of material that I needed removed. So that was just luck. Need to do things a little more gingerly, but it's so hard to tell and see when that cutter's on the backside. Let's see here. Now I'm at a 0.3975. So got about a little over a few thou ago. And I took the rest off and see where we're at. Since I'm using basically a profiling tool, I, it's, I'm going to go ahead and take the back cut. I don't think I could get away with this if I was using steel, but this phosphor bronze is very forgiving and very easy to work with. So, at about six ten thou more to go. So, I'm going to barely bring it in, just ever so gingerly and lightly do it. Let's see where we're at. I'm moving less than a thou and pushed it away so that I wouldn't take a pressure cut. It left an absolutely beautiful finish. That's something about this AR Warner. 
high speed cutter. So, wow. 393 on the dot. That's a beauty. That's nice. The CR Warren is such a nice finish that it's my shop cloths actually scratch the bearings more than the surface finish left by the cutter. So, put some die came on and let that set up. And while that's set up, I'm going to set up my hermaphrodite calipers. And the math on this is where the width is 0 0.270 and the flat is going to be 20 thou. So the difference for the area of the taper is going to be 0 0.250. And so each taper is 0.125 length, which is kind of odd in that for a book that was originally in metric, I thought, that is exactly one eighth of an inch in Imperial SAE. As you saw just now, I use my loop to make sure everything is set up correctly on the slide, because unfortunately there's no odd numbers and it's kind of eyeballing it in between two even numbers. The one side for the hermaphrodite coppers, super nice line, super accurate. Boy, this backside was just such a pain left such a wonky line. I only got a few good sections, but I'm going to be using that loop again to line up my cutter to make sure that it is on the money. But I also have to reuse my hermaphrodite calipers, or excuse me, hermaphrodite dividers to make sure I've got an accurate line on there when I cut the backside. This loop has been absolutely indispensable. So, that's all lined up. I'm going to go ahead and get my cut. Luckily for me, that copper washer is smaller than the taper, so it completely misses it. And it's done. And pretty much going to be the same thing on the back side. But I'll let the lady do the rest of my talking for now. Today's journeyman trick of the day is all about containers. Yes, containers. When I first met one of the journeymen, they were really into containers and container, perhaps even a little container crazy. And I have found the more I've gotten into this, the more I've learned, the more tools I've begun to acquire, is that I have also empathetically and understandably become container crazy as well. The journeyman tool and die maker showed me how to put together little kits that for had common screws, nuts and bolts, and their tap, tap die, sometimes the tap die, and corresponding drill bit. So that I could quickly whip out and put together a little jig, an arbor or some other fixture immediately and wouldn't have to dig around for them, run around and buy them and wait days upon days and order them and search about for something in stock online on the internet. The journeyman's favorite container is an Altoid box, a nice little Altoid tin. I don't really have a lot of Altoids, so I decided to do my part to save the earth and recycle some empty spice jars. Today I use a number 21 drill bit as well as the 10 NF by 30 second tap. So I'm going to put this together in a little kit. There's my drill bit, my tap, 
and then the leftover nuts bolt screws. So now I put together a little 10 and a kit so that I have it handy on hand and whenever I need another fixture or jig or arbor or something else I can quickly whip the, whip one together and I have all the parts I need to keep on machining and making chips. In order to obtain the highest level of precision I wanted to do this in a single chuck. So I want to make sure I have all my bearings done and then the, add them to the fixture and do my finished machining and cut my tapers. Like today, I don't. I just did the video and I've got to edit it, so I'm not really in the mood to do it. So I'll just remove my fixture. Next time I get around to it, I'll set aside a good amount of time in a full day. I'll rechuck in the fixture, machine off the end, and remachine all the surfaces you just saw me do. And then I'll have it in a single chucking, and then I'll just start redoing my bearings from there and move on. And that's kind of a free journeyman trick of the day because despite using a, a dial indicator and using shims and even ha having a adjustable jaw chuck, it'll get close. It just won't be perfect and have that high degree, much higher degree of precision. Thanks so much for spending your time with me today. Hopefully you joined that and perhaps you found it useful. If so, please be sure to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and bell notification so you never miss another journeyman tip or trick of the day or installment of my make and machining on the Koza Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track. For more great social media, be sure to hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Pinterest. I'll have links below in the description, or I could simply be found at Lloyd Precision Makers. Till next time, have fun, stay safe, and keep making chips.